Okay, making everything new. This is the last of this series. We started out at Christmas. He says we get, God gives us his baby, and as with a baby in, in, in our lives, it changes our lives from that time forward, and the change is not just a one-time deal. Every single day is different. We're blessed. At least that's how I remember it. My kids are old now, so I don't remember the, the tough stuff, right? Every single day is a new blessing with kids, and, and it's so awesome. And how much more with Jesus? The baby Jesus enter our lives, and the, Bible, the Old Testament says his mercies are brand new every day. So every single day, his, his blessings and his mercies are brand new. This, this baby Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, every single day, that's been our focus. We've looked at his gifts, and, and today we're looking at this gift that he give, would give us today, new awe. That word awe, uh, it's one of those words, I forget what it's called. It's got a name, but I, 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 I just couldn't remember it. But it, the, the way, the word is said the way of, in the way it, that it means, like awe. Do, do that with me, ready? Awe. Isn't that, isn't that what awe is? You open your mouth and go, oh man, awe, right? Uh, it, and if you've ever, it, it's happened to all of us. I remember in Colorado, uh, the first time we went on, it was called Trail Ridge Road. It's the highest continually paved uh, 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 highway in the world. And I'm not, ca- awe. It just is so amazing. In fact, it's only open six months out of the year, and, and, and I remember j- just for the fun of it, uh, what, we were in Estes Park, and I said, well, let's go see how far we can go. And so we went a few miles up, and then we hit this huge wall of snow, and yeah, I was in awe. This Southern California kid, look at all that freaking snow. Yeah, I was in awe again. You know, I don't know what gets you, and I, was, my, I remember my wife, uh, she grew up in, in South Dakota, all they have is these little lakes in South Dakota, and, and, and so when she saw the ocean, right, she used to talk about it, she said, I was just in awe, it was so amazing, it never, it was just went on and on and on, I was in awe. Some people, uh, they're in awe when they, when they have a different place, the Bahamas or, or, or the, the lake up in the Reno, you know, wh- wherever it might be. Um, that's what the word awe means, huh? We're just, our jaw drops, and we're overcome in wonderment. That's awe. So today we're going to focus on this idea of, of new awe. You know, lots of times we don't think of Jesus in this way. Uh, we think of him as our shepherd, and we, you know, shepherd's really a strong picture in the Bible. He's the one who laid down his life, and nobody took it from him. He laid it down and picked it up again, but we don't think of it that way. We think of it kind of like a warm fuzzy. Uh, we used, uh, my daughter always had this picture in her room, and, and Jesus was holding this little lamb. And every night we'd say, Sarah, remember that little lamb? That little lamb is you. And, everybody, and you go, oh, man, that he's holding us. And, and that, that's true. That's a wonderful gift that, that we want to have as well, right? This, this that God tenderly holds us. Or Jesus uh, as, as our friend. Huh? What a friend we have in Jesus. Or Jesus as our brother. We have all these pictures of Jesus. But we don't very often think about him as the one who fills us with awe, as the King of kings and Lord of lords, as the one who, is, who dwells in all the fullness of Godhead bodily. That's what it says. In all the fullness of God, Jesus dwells in human form. Whoa, that's awe stuff. I thought about this. I, I thought about this quote uh, from C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. You guys read that any time? It's a, it's a fantasy, uh, right? And it, it's really about the Christian experience and the Christian reality, but, but he does it with this, in this fantasy world. And, and they, they, he has different characters. And the lion is, is supposed to be Jesus. All right, he's supposed to tell us something about Jesus. It says, Aslan is a lion. The lion, the greatest lion. And the Old Testament calls the coming Messiah what? The Lion of Judah. We sing a song here sometimes. I think we did last week. The Lion of Judah, right? That's who we're singing about. A lion. I, I was, uh, yeah, I look at beaches sometimes because I love, I love the water. And, and there, there was this, it said dangerous beaches, and I couldn't help it. And on this one, a guy was surfing, there was a lion on shore. And I'm thinking, whoa, I wouldn't want to come out. I mean, lion, are, they're, they're pretty powerful. They matter. I'd run the other way, catch me. But I'd run the other way, right? The, he's the lion. You get that? Be in awe a little bit. Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. And so this goes on. Aslan is a lion, the lion, the greatest lion. Ooh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. And we know he's a man, right? True man and true God. But I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he is good. He's a king, I tell you. Of course he isn't safe. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the lion, but he is good. That's what we're going to look at today. That's what I want you to take home. 
we're not, we're not erasing Jesus as the wonderful good shepherd who holds us close. We're not erasing Jesus as what a friend we have in Jesus. We're, we're not, but we're, but we're focusing on this reality. He's a line of Judah. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in him. He is the king of lo- kings and lord of lords, and his kingdom will rule forever. He will rule forever. And, and, and God gives us this vision, this gift, that his baby Jesus is, is the king of kings, right? Is, is the line of Judah as a gift to, to, to make us strong in him. Not, not to rattle us, but to make us strong in him and to allow us to see who we're tied to and what it means. This, uh, this text, the, uh, the transfiguration, it begins like this, about eight days after Jesus said this. Now, I don't know about you, but the first thing I want to know is what? What happened eight days ago? Are, are you guys in the same place? I mean, I, I want to know what happened eight days ago. And what's really interesting is that the other two times it's recorded, Matthew and Mark, this is in Luke, in Matthew and Mark, it says the same thing, and it's kind of measuring from a different place, but it says about six days ago. So all three of them are saying, hey, something happened here that ties into this. And, and by the way, in all of the three accounts, it's the same thing that happened here that ties into the transfiguration. Pretty cool, huh? So what happened eight days before that? Let, let's see. Here we go. Jesus was around the disciples, and he says, uh, who do people say I am? Uh, and they say, well, some say you're a good teacher, or a nice rabbi. You know, some people say that you're a prophet. Some people say you might even be Elijah, come back from the dead. And he says, well, who do you guys say I am? Huh? And, and Peter answered this. He said, uh, you are the Christ. And, and in one of the other gospels, it's, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, we read this, and, and we say, oh, that, that's nice. Yeah, that, that's who Jesus is. This is line of Judah talk, guys. This is king of king talk. Peter is saying, you are the most awesome king, the ruler of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the heavens and earth. Nothing was made that was made without you. Through you, everything is held together. You are the king, and you will rule forever and ever and ever. And those who are in your kingdom will live forever. Those who are not will not be with you forever. That's what he's saying here. You are the king that we're looking for that has come to defeat all of our enemies so that we can have life the way it was meant to be. This is king talk. This isn't shepherd talk. This is, this is king talk. It's not friend talk. This is king talk. It's not brother talk. This is power talk. Peter was in awe. God wants us to be in awe. Jesus, in him, all the fullness of the deity dwells. He is all God, and he rules. Goes on. Jesus immediately tells them what he's going to do. He tells them ahead of time. Yeah, I'm the king. This is what I'm going to do. The son of man must suffer many things and be rejected and killed and on the third day be raised to life. The king of all is going to lay down his life for you. The lion of Judah is going to allow himself to be nailed to the cross for you, but he's going to win. It's still king talk, guys. Did you see that? Be raised to, read the last word, life. Victory, victory, victory. It's still king talk. And now he starts to talk about those who are in his kingdom or those who refuse to be in his kingdom. Go ahead. He says, then he said to them all. Notice now, to them all. That's a a huge word. You think we're supposed to be hear this? He said to them all, to everyone, to all. This is for everybody, right? As the king. As the one that we're in awe of. As the lion of Judah. The lion sitting on the beach and I got to get out of the water and face. I'm in awe, right? All right, so then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Oh, man. Of course he's not safe. Of course he's not safe. You got to die. You got to die to yourself. You got to turn your back on every other kingdom. Of course he ain't safe. He's going to turn your life upside down. 
He's going to turn your world upside down. But tell me, how's it going for you anyway? Things work out pretty good on our own. How does it work out when we tie ourselves to other kingdoms? When we listen to our voice, when we do our thing, does it last? Or is it here today and gone tomorrow? Just a bunch of disappointment, just fool's gold. What is it? Of course he's not safe. But his way is the way of life, real life, not this counterfeit stuff. He says, if anyone will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, just as I go to the cross. You carry that identity with you. We, we, we nail our sins to the cross every day and we walk free in the resurrection as his child, part of his kingdom. Uh, if, if anyone, uh, this is what you have to do. Forever who wants to save his life, real life, this is all way life, the, 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 um, at the very foundation of what life is about. Whoever wants to have what life is all about, I've come in my life and have it to the full. Whoever wants that, hey, you have to walk away. If you're trying to save what you build, forget it, man. Your kingdom will not last. We'll lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. This is king talk. It's not meant to scare us. It's meant to give us this new reality to, to be in awe of the king and that you are in his kingdom by grace through faith and you're empowered to live in his kingdom in a kingdom that will last forever. The other side of the coin, he says this, if anyone's ashamed of me and my words, the son of man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. When the king comes, all of those who have rebelled against him, all of those who have tied themselves to another kingdom, all of his enemies, whether it's Satan and the demons, whether it's death or hell, whether it's those who have rebelled against him, they will all be defeated. His kingdom will reign the kingdom you're a part of. This is king talk. This is kingdom talk. I, I really struggle with this one because I, I don't think I have words for it. <laughs> I, I just hope I've scratched the surface for you what this is all about. Uh, to, to give you a sense of the awe of this God who makes you part of his kingdom in this one, this Lion of Judah. This is the foundation and, and, and it springs board in, in, into the transfiguration with this last with this last quote. It says, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Transfiguration is about the disciples and us through these words seeing the kingdom of God. When Jesus stepped on the earth, he says the kingdom of God is near. The word is egg was right in front of you. He is the kingdom. He brings the kingdom. Every king does that. Every king is the kingdom and brings the kingdom. Jesus Christ is no different. And so he was going to reveal the kingdom to, to Peter, James, and John, and through them to you. That's what's happening here. So, he, so, so right away, you have this tr transfiguration. As he was praying, now I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent because I, I, I see this all the time, and I, and I, and I want to say it once in a while. Read the Gospels. Read the book of Acts. Read the epistles. There's so much prayer in it, it'll blow you over if you look for it. Everywhere you see Jesus, he's praying. He's praying before he chooses the disciples. He's praying after he's, after he's baptized. He goes in the wilderness, he's praying. He's, he's, he, uh, the, he's going as is his custom to a, to a place quietly to pray. Uh, he, he's, he's praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He's praying on Monday, Thursday for his disciples and for us. The whole kingdom is brought as he prays. And in the book of Acts, the, the, the Christians are constantly praying. Before the day of Pentecost, all the Christians are in a room and they're all praying. Every Christian who was a Christian is praying. And boom, the, the time of Pentecost comes. God's kingdom comes of itself. But we pray that it might come amongst us. See? Pray. It, it, it's, it's, it's a mystery. And it's not because we pray so good and we're so wonderful, but because God ties his promises to prayer. But we see it again here as he was praying, and the kingdom's going to be revealed. And you see it again and again. He prays, the kingdom's revealed. He prays, the kingdom's revealed. Christians pray, the kingdom comes, it's revealed. You can't miss it. Pray for our ministry together. 
Pray for your ministry in your home with your husband and wife and children. Pray for your children. Bring them together and pray with them. Pray for Christians all over the world. Pray for their witness to those who are not part of the kingdom, who are in rebellion against the kingdom. There's only one king. Pray. I, 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 there, I know there's a mystery to it. I know we doubt it sometimes. Please pray. Bathe your whole life and the mission of Christ in prayer. You see it everywhere. You can't miss it. Even the king of kings prayed. As true man, he prayed to his heavenly father. So as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. His clothes became as bright as a flash of light. Boom! The glory, his glory is revealed. What glory is that? The one who all the fullness of the God had dwelled in bodily. That's who it was. This was the glory of God revealed to, to, to Peter, James, and John. They saw his glory. They were in awe. It was this gift of awe. Now tell me, after, uh, after his death and his resurrection and his ascension, do you think they ever talked about this? Do you think they ever talked about, yeah, remember we, we confessed who he was, and then he told us what was going to happen, and then he showed us his glory. What is he trying to do there? I mean, we kind of blew it. We forgot all about that when he died. It, it overwhelmed us, but, but now we're not, because he's told us what's going to come. He's going to come again in all of his glory. We're living in this time. I can just see him talking. We're living in this time. We're going to learn from that point. We see his glory. We know he's the king. And even though we're living in this hard time, by the way, Peter, James, and John, let's see, James was the first disciple who was martyred. He was skinned alive. Peter was hung upside down on a cross, uh, and, and, and John, uh, uh, he, he was the last one to go, but he was, he was stuck out on the island of Patmos, on a deserted island. They had hard lives. The people they shared Jesus with, many of them were tortured and murdered. What kept him going? Here we go. They saw his glory. They knew who Jesus was. They were in awe of him. Yeah, they had forgotten it going into this death, and they, they had despaired, but we're not forgetting now because we've seen his glory twice on the mountain and in the empty tomb, see? Can't you see him talking about this? We're going to trust him this time. He's told us the end from the beginning. He's coming in all this glory. And he's the king, and he rules everything, and he's with us right now. Oh, and that's the time we live in, right? Do you see his glory on the mountain? Do you see his glory in the empty tomb? Going through hard times? You're tied to the king. He's ruling everything for you. Be in awe of his glory. And that you're part of this kingdom, which rules right now. Maybe in shadow, maybe in hiddenness, but will finally rule forever for everyone to see. Don't you think they talked about this stuff? Don't you think it was put down for us to talk about it? All number one, a glimpse of the glory of the kingdom fully come and all of the line of Judah, the first and the last, the Almighty, uh, before he comes in all of his glory, before the empty tomb, before he's revealed to all, right? Go ahead. It goes on here. It says, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, what he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. They saw the two men. So you have, what's this all about? What's going on? You've got Moses and Elijah. Why, why are these two guys there? What's, well, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, and, and the prophets wrote the rest, and Elijah was the, the chief prophet, right? So, so this stands for all of the Old Testament, every word of which points to the coming Savior, every word of which points to Judah, uh, the, the line of Judah, every one of word of which points to Jesus coming. And Jesus is the fulfillment of all this stuff, all the promises of God, the kingdom of God, he brings, you see, they, they, they couldn't miss this, this one who was in glory before them was going to fulfill all the promises of God as he humbly went the way of the cross. Here's all number two, he fulfills the mission. And the psalm says, for with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are held in awe. You ever think about that? Uh, I had a professor once, um, and he said all, he, he, as far as he was concerned, what it meant to grow in Jesus was more and more to see your sin. I, and I think he had something sometimes. 
Uh, uh, and so the more you see your sin, the more you're in awe because you're washed clean in the blood of Christ. What a neat place to live, that place of grace. It's not about you jumping through a hoop. It's about you receiving the gift. What awe of this glorious Christ. Finish the mission by going the way of the cross. That's what they were talking about, his departure. What was his departure? The cross and the empty tomb. Right in front of the disciples. They couldn't miss it. Peter, he, <laughs> he just starts talking. <laughs> we wouldn't do that, would we? Uh, we, don't, we don't tell God what to do. Yeah, we, we say, oh, God, you're wonderful. Oh, but uh, we, we, we never say, hey, just, you know, here I am. You talk to me in your word. I'll do it. No, we, we, we don't ever want to. We, we don't ever take the place of Peter, right? So he just starts yabbering about it. He says, you know, it's good for me to be here. Duh. It's great to be here. I'm surrounded by the glory of Christ. I see him face to face. Yeah, he's the one in fulfillment. I feel at peace and, and safe and secure and all those things, right? He says, we'll just build three tabernacles here and we'll just stay here. What do you think? And so he's just yabbering around. Even the text says he didn't really know what he was saying, right? <laughs> and then a cloud comes. Go ahead, Lisa. When he was still speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. These guys were good Jews. You think of a cloud in the Old Testament? Surrounded uh, the Mount Sinai where the Ten Commandments were given. If they touched the mountain, they'd be fried, right? Cr cr crispy critters, right? They, they'd be dead. You think they didn't know that? This is the cloud of God. Of course they were afraid. But they had the line of Judah with them. And the cloud had descended, I think, in a subtle way to tell Peter, just shut up, pal. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Just shut up and, 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 and listen to me. And this is what you have to hear, Peter. This is my son. This is the line of Judah. This is the king of kings and lord of lords. This is the one you're in awe of. Not yourself and your own ideas or what you think or what you can do. This is the one. Peter, just listen to him. Just listen to him. And live in his word. On number three, we listen to him alone. And we can trust him because his is the voice of the Lion of Judah. Whew. This awe stuff is an amazing gift, isn't it? You can be in all of his glory, all of his kingdom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's always a little dangerous. He's always a little unsafe because he turns us upside down and he turns this world that is so broken and fouled up, he turns it upside down to bring a new kingdom, a new way, his way, his kingdom in our hearts, in our lives, and in our world. You can listen to him. His heart caused him to go the way of the cross. And he speaks from that heart. He speaks to you. The king. Isn't that amazing? He speaks to you. So what would the disciples have taken from this as they lived out their lives after the resurrection? They would have remembered him in awe of his glory, his love, his victory, his majesty. They would have remembered the voice of the Father, listen to him. Perhaps they would have said to one another, we again know the end from the beginning. We have seen his glory and we will see it again. And we will be glorified with him. We give him our allegiance. We follow him. We trust his love. We listen to him alone. We are not ashamed. We glory in his glory. Book of Revelation, it gives us this picture. We know the end from the beginning, just like Jesus gave to those three disciples, but it's a different end. It's not the cross and the empty tomb. It's when he comes in all of his glory, revealed as the king of kings to all, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father to him. Be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. 
and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God. You know what, even those who pierced him, what's that talking about? Well, it goes on to say that, that all uh, the nations of the earth will mourn because of him. You see, he really is the king. And when he comes, everyone who has rebelled against his king, everyone who is his enemies will be utterly defeated. And those who are of the earth and not of Jesus Christ, they will be left mourning in their utter destruction. Now is this wonderful time of grace. He wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of truth. But when he returns, he will come as the king. And all the people who are not tied to him who rebelled will mourn because of him. God doesn't say this to drag us down. He says this to remind us that all of our enemies will be defeated. And the kingdom to which we belong will last in eternity. Aslan is a lion. The lion, the greatest lion. Ooh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. He's the king, I tell you. What does this mean in your life? right now, to know Jesus in this way, in this awe, that he is the king of all. May God's spirit guide you this week. Amen. We stand.